I said in the previous video that I had a big announcement and as you can tell by the title of this film I'm now the proud owner of my own woodland and what an awesome one it is I'm going to give you guys a tour absolutely buzzing to be able to like show you this and finally announce this news because it's been a couple months in the waiting and I've had to keep it quiet and it's been really tough but this is just it's such a good woodland let me show you around so as you can probably tell by the beautiful colors around me this is where I filmed my last short episode it is a primarily mature beech woodland there is some large oak also some ash trees and mostly uh, small hazel uh, the way it's been coppiced in the past. This is a very old woodland with plenty of history. Um, oh, it's just awesome. Well, like I say, this has been a couple of weeks in the making. It's much faster than buying a house, that's for sure. The process only takes about six to eight weeks. Uh, this one only took six weeks, so I was really pleased with that. But yeah, just absolutely, I still, still can't quite believe it that I now finally own my own woodland. A lot of people ask on my channel, you know, where I was doing the, the structures and things like that. Mike, is that your own woodland or did you have to get permission and things like that? So I didn't own those woodlands, but I did have permission to do the kind of builds that I did there. And I still have permission. Um, so it's one of those things where things like the Saxon house and the pallet cabin and all that still got permission there. Still going to do films there in the kind of coniferous forest. Um, but look, you can't really beat this, can you? Look at it absolutely beautiful i'm going to show you kind of different resources and things that i have here and give you a little tour so as you can see mostly lovely mature monster beech trees which at the moment have just incredible colors coming through but it's beautiful the floor just leaves everywhere this is about my third time here second time ever filming here so there's still lots to explore listen to that can't really top that sound except maybe crunching on snow that is autumn at its best if you could if you could put autumn sounds in a jar that's what it would sound like real big big old beach here this I think is the biggest beech tree on the property Big Bertha, I'll call it. That is, well, in fact, you can't really see the top of it, but she's a beast. Now on two of the perimeters of the, the woodland border, uh, they back onto a field, an open field, and the farmer is has some livestock in there. It looks like sheep at the moment. Uh, so you might start hearing sheep in my videos, which would be funny. But um, yeah, it's, it's just uh, a really clear kind of boundary. You see that, all that light in the, background there that's all the surrounding field and it only goes on to two of the boundaries um, but yeah there's some actually really good resources up here I'll show you so this is these are trees that are planted hundreds of years ago we have a mixture of beech but actually this is bordered by mostly mature oak trees on this side where I'm stood so these were planted hundreds of years ago probably judging by the size of the oaks three to four hundred years I reckon some of them, are, one of them might even be, yeah, probably 400 years old. You know, that's traditionally how they would have done it. It's planted trees and that's how they would have marked some of their boundaries years ago. They wouldn't have had the kind of fencing. They would have just done it with, with trees to begin with. See the leaves just dropping down? That's like a desktop wallpaper. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, mature oak, mature oak big oak big oak another oak tree there so this is kind of the traditional boundary that's hundreds of years old and this is an ancient road really path that wagons and horse and cart would have used hundreds of years ago and it runs right along the border of the woodland that i own beautiful i mean this is probably the biggest oak on the property we've got big bertha beach what should we call him old harry I think we call him. He is a beast. Now it's got some ivy on it, which uh, I've got some management to do on this. I know this is uh, really good for 
pigeon and things to roost in. Now this oak tree here, I've got some management to do in this woodland, which I'd like to do just slowly over time. There's no rush because I don't need to use the woodland as a monetary resource for, for selling wood. Um, this is essentially my filming studio now. But I will be doing some management of the woodland and just to look after it and try and make those resources reusable because that's what it's all about, woodland management. It's about creating a resource that can be sustainable in the long term. So I will be going down that route. But there's obviously big ivy growing up this oak tree. And whilst that's great for pigeons and birds to roost in, the issue I've seen over the years with oak trees, uh, especially on oak trees and ivy, is that during the winter storms when we have strong winds here in the UK, uh, it tends to just blow them down because they've got all that resistance still. Where they'd normally lose their leaves in winter, the wind could blow through the branches and they would, it would have no problem and, and less pressure on the root system. However, once the ivy, which is evergreen, is growing on the oak tree, I've seen it all along roadsides and everywhere near me, they tend to blow down and it's quite sad really because they're hundreds of hundreds of years old and it's almost like their life was cut short so yeah i'm torn about the ivy but i think certainly on old harry here that ivy's got to go um, i'll just create some cuts probably about a foot to foot and 18 inches in a gap so that the ivy doesn't regrow back and eventually that will die over time um, and i can it will fall off the tree and i'll be able to pull some of it off the tree and maybe use it for something but um, the pigeons will have plenty of things to roost in of areas. I'm sure we've got some grey squirrel. There's, the wildlife is just awesome here. It's just, wow. Right, we're, on the, we're going around the border now. Hello, lads. Looking a little bit confused. But they're out there having fun. We'll leave them to it. Again, lots of hazel that I could coppice and create maybe a natural fence because Jax is going to want to run out there, that's for sure. That's probably the main area where I'll do some films. Maybe build a bushcraft shelter there, a decent one. And then this area of the woodland's quite nice. So again, we're still following the field. Big oak tree down there, some firewood, plenty of firewood. Again, loads of branches around that I can use, but this is interesting. More oak on this boundary. So beech seems to be in the middle, oak on the boundary. Um, and we just keep going around. I'll show you this, because this is good. We've got some brambles here, wild edibles, so they'll be good come, come uh, autumn time next year, berry season. There's small hazel coming up there. Holly, which is always nice as a screening, but certainly if I'm filming wildlife and things like that, it's nice to have a bit of screening and a nice colour in the backdrop. But it's here, this lot, that I'm interested in as well, near the field. Look at all this hazel. Loads of hazel. Absolutely tons of it. And all the right diameter that bushcrafters love. Nice and straight, look at that. That is a woodsman's dream. So, a very old tradition here in the UK, which is making a bit of a comeback, is coppicing which in simple terms is where you cut wood, you cut small trees down and younger shoots grow up the next year and in a roundabout, I think it's a seven year cycle, you then cut that tree down again and it essentially keeps growing back. Hazel is probably one of the best resources for it but you can get it with sweet chestnut and other species as well. This is kind of an example of that. Here is a hazel tree and traditionally this would have been cut low down and the stump or the stool would have then had these small sun shoots growing out of it. That was a bit of a dead branch there, but they, they grow out and they're really flexible when they're green. For example here, you can see how much they bend. And that's why hazel is such a great bushcraft resource and especially these small young saplings or, sh or sun shoots. Um, and then in years to come, a couple of years time, maybe seven, eight years, this will become, these will become more of a thicker tree and branch and you can coppice them again and you can just keep using this resource and it will grow back. And that's what's happened here from the looks of it in my woodland. Traditionally, hasn't been done in a while, I don't think. And maybe I can revitalize that ancient craft. And for those that remember the Celtic roundhouse, um, we built the fence or the walls in a traditional medieval fence style, which is wattle, um, which is the weaving of hazel 
this type of hazel, this little bit thicker than this, weaving it in and out some vertical uprights and that made our wall structure to the roundhouse but it's also a kind of medieval fencing technique and it's something that I could apply perhaps to the edge of the boundary that I have here with the field because uh, obviously Jax is seeing sheep he's going to want to run in there sometimes so it'd be nice to just have a bit of a natural boundary and some dead rotten wood I'll probably build up with it as well so lots of cool things to do. Amongst all the big old oak trees as well there's quite a few oaks here Oak, oak, oak. Oh, look at this, it's like an oak circle. Spooky. I wonder if that was deliberate. Let's go further on. You can see here behind me, there's actually quite a lot of windfall and blown over deadfall of mostly hazel trees. Now this wasn't hit when I first viewed the woodland. These weren't, these hadn't fallen over like that. It was all fairly upright. We had some big storms come in, about a week's week of back-to-back -back big storms, and it's blown a load of this hazel over. Now, don't get me wrong, most of it is dead hazel anyway, so it was already dead trees. But that is some great resources, certainly a bit of firewood. I'm not gonna leave it there to rot. Uh, I am gonna collect that, chop it up, use it for firewood at home, but actually have as well some firewood here and some good, you know, we're gonna get a lot of rain this winter, let's face it, it's England. So if I can gather some firewood now, it's November, middle of November, I'm going to need to build a log store. There's so much to build, guys. I've got loads to build. So that's going to be a uh, resource to look out for. Some of it is green as well, but it's just been totally blown over. But this is still part of the hazel section of the woodland. I mean, that's still pretty green, so I'll leave those, leave those green ones. But any dead ones, like in here, this one's a little bit dead. I think that's going to be some good bush rough stuff. Bow drill material as well. Oh, those leaves come down. Not happening. So this looks to me, I thought it was oak at first, but it's actually an ash I went and checked. The very tip of the branches um, and it has the black buds on it, which is a classic sign of ash. It's a shame, it's a lovely, big, huge, straight tree, but sadly it's been blown down in the wind or possibly ash died back, has weakened it and then it's been blown down. It's one of those things where I'm not sure, part of me doesn't want to chop this up for firewood. It wants, part of me wants to leave it here because I feel if I manage the woodland too much, it becomes too immaculate and it just becomes too manicured, if you know what I mean. It doesn't feel as raw. So I don't know. Part of me wants to leave this tree here, let nature do its thing. Uh, fungi will grow on it. If it's ash, there'll be cramp balls galore in a couple of years time. It's all rotten and died out from the middle, you can see. So I think ash dieback has totally nailed that, but it just looks awesome and part of me doesn't want to just chop it all up and I don't know what do you guys think shall I leave the ash tree alone and let it just let nature take over it's a shame it's a real beast lovely straight wood it would have been great for buildings things hard it's a hard wood it's also an amazing firewood but sadly it's wiped out a few hazel trees Black buds there. It's a classic sign of of an ash tree. But look, it's pretty pretty done. Still burn well. Maybe I could use some of these branches for firewood. Another ash tree just here. Still alive. Nice bit of fungi there, bracket fungi, for you mushroom lovers. Now here's an old dead tree. That is very rotten and actually pretty dangerous. So that might have to come down because that's coming down in a storm if not. It's 
pretty big as well. Top section might be alright for firewood. But look, it's just split off here. Look at the difference in beech trees colour. This is why I love beech trees. You've got red, bit of yellow, orange. This one's still quite green. Here we have a silver birch. Pretty old one from the gnarly looking bark on it. But that one's still going well. Still some leaves on it. Still got in the woodland some of these tree protectors. But obviously the tree has grown out of that one or died and split off. So there's quite a few on the floor which I need to tidy up and clean up. Lots of sort of cleaning to do. Look at this one, he's about to pop. This is a hazel. But that is essentially to stop the deer eating them when they're young trees, young shoots, deer and other animals, and just give them a bit of protection, these collars. But they are sadly strewn around the woods, so I need to tidy them up. Lots of, lots of like big areas to pitch tents, build shelters. I'm, I'm well aware of beech trees and branches that can fall suddenly, so I will be sensible about where I put a tent. Just wick, look at all of that, look at it. Ooh. Just beautiful. Even here, there's just space for so many tents and just camping, the camping opportunities here. Always nice to see young shoots coming through as well. And there's quite a few. So this is good to see. Lots of fungi as well. Plenty of rich wildlife. Well, that is it. That's the big news I wanted to announce to you. I have finally bought my own wooden and I'm super proud. This doesn't mean the kind of end of the other things that I've done with the pallet cabin and the more recent World War II foxhole and things like that. This basically opens a whole nother door, a whole new world to me and my channel and a new adventure for you guys to follow me on. This is now a, a, a new journey for me and you know, part of this will be woodland management and learning how to manage my own woodland and just develop it and keep it sustainable. I've got more freedom and flexibility to do much more here than I could at other places. I'm just, yeah, I'm over the moon and I'm, I'm really excited to finally break the news to you guys. But I don't know what I'm gonna do first, to be honest. I think I'm gonna get some trail cameras, set up some trail cameras and see what kind of wildlife comes here at night. I've seen deer, I've seen hare, I've seen rabbits buzzards that are nesting up in the beech trees i hear owls in the late afternoon there's so much wildlife here compared to the coniferous forest where i'm in which was mostly deer there's just so much more here and i'm just really excited to start i don't know where to start like i say trail cameras a bit of woodland management if you guys have any suggestions uh, i know a lot of professional foresters and things like that watch my films so drop some comments in and let me know because this is all new to me uh, as I'm sure it's going to be new to you guys following along. But this is a whole new chapter, guys. A whole new journey. And it's come at a great time. I've just passed 2 million subscribers. You know, it's just, it's come at a really good time. I've spent the best part of six years trying to find a woodland. So basically, since I became full-time YouTube, one of my goals was to be able to buy my own woodland. Can you hear that, Bird of Prey? Sounds like a buzzard. Two buzzards. There we go. See, this is what it's all about. Oh, it's a massive buzzard. Let's just see where he nests. Yeah, as I was saying, this took the best part of six years to try and find this. I visited various woodlands around the country in the south of England. And more often than not, they were for sale, they were available, but it would either be two things. They'd be too highly priced for what they were, or they would always have something wrong with them. They'd either be in really boggy land, or they'd be right next to a road, hence why they were available. And it was really disheartening because I was really looking for a woodland at that point. And this one came up, and I'd already visited it, and I put my offer in super fast within an hour of it going up, and it all came through. And then six weeks later, I now own it. So for me, it was a pretty nerve wracking time having lost out on some other ones, but actually I'm kind of glad because this one is better. Um, uh, it's just a much quieter area of the woodland. There's no public footpaths going through this woodland. So 
it's perfect. It's everything I could want for filming. And the sun obviously sets over there and it's just beautiful reflecting through the leaves at the moment. And I'm looking forward to winter as well here. You know, maybe if it snows, we can get some snow videos here. It's just, this is, I can't explain how happy I am. And I'm really pleased to be able to share it with you. So thank you to all of you who've been able to make this dream a reality. Everything in terms of YouTube, the woodland and things like that. It's just been, it's been amazing. What a journey. And thank you. And it's only just beginning. So cheers for watching. Thanks for all your support. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next episode. See you later.